Hello everyone and welcome to another Unity tutorial video. In this video I wanted to do something a little different which is to talk about shaders and more specifically we're going to be creating uh, fragment and vertex shaders in this video. So why use a, a fragment and vertex shader? Usually if you want very realistic lighting you would end up using a surface shader. But if you have an unlit object, using a surface shader is an, is an overkill since it does all the lighting calculations for your pixel. And then once that's over, you have to remove all these calculations, which is just a waste. So if you have something that's unlit or something or very basic effects that you want to make, uh, making it using a vertex and fragment shaders uh, is much better. Of course, that's not to say that you can't create a lighting model as good as the surface shader using uh, vertex and fragment shaders, but why would you do that? It's way too much work for what it's worth. So let's go ahead and create our object that we want to shade. So we'll create a cube and put it in 000. So we see what's happening to it. There we go. And next up, we will create our shader. And for this, we will just start with the standard surface shader, but we will change everything inside there. We'll call this one my shader. And then open it up. As you can see here, it's split up into multiple sections. First off, this is the uh, shader's declaration, and this is the category that it's going to be placed in, and this is our shader's name. So you can change this category. Um, for example, if we create a material, we call it this one mat, and attach it to our cube. As you can see here, um, here it says that it should be in custom slash my shader. So if we go to custom, my shader, you'll find it in here. If you change this custom to anything else um, to be more descriptive, you can do that. So if I change it to tutorial slash my shader, as you can see, it's in tutorials now, my shader. Okay, now that we have that one set up, uh, you'll see that the properties, we have multiple properties here, four of them that we can assign. And these are the same properties that you see inside Unity. So for the purposes of this shader, we're not going to be using any of these properties. So we can go ahead and delete them. There we go. Now the sub shader is where most of your shader uh, logic would go. And for uh, vertex and fragment shaders, you need passes to do that. For this video, we will only create a single pass, but you can have, you, you just can keep in mind that you can have multiple passes uh, doing multiple effects uh, going one after the other. So let's create our pass. And we need to tell Unity that this will be a CG program. And at the end, we will say NCG. So we are just telling it that everything between these two are going to be either CG or HLS though. Next up, we'll say pragma vertex vert. And what this is saying is that our vertex shader, uh, our vertex shader's function will be called vert, and we'll do the same for the fragment. And we'll call this one frag. Okay, now that we have everything set up, we can go ahead and create our um, input structs for our vertex well, input and output structs for our vertex shader. The vertex shader uh, takes in a value because um, each vertex is made up of multiple values. For example, the position of the, of the vertex and the normal and the UVs and so on. So we're telling it what this vertex function is going to need. So let's create a struct and we'll call it vert input. And this struct will have a float for called position, which will have the semantic of position. 
Now, since we are not doing anything with texturing yet and we're not doing anything with normals, we don't need to uh, include that in our vertex input. Next up, we will have our vertex output. And the main idea behind the shader will be to um, color our, our cube depending on where it is in the world. Wherever it goes, it gets a different color depending on x, its x, y, and z values in the world. So what we will need to do for the output now is to give it a, it will be a struct of vert output. And the output for the struct, um, for the vertex function specifically, you always have to have a position. And this position will always be the position of the pixel on the screen. So each vertex gets a position on the screen and then uh, pixels are interpolated between these two values. So we will need a float for position and the semantic for this is always sv underscore position. And finally a color so that will be a half three. We'll call this one color and the semantic for this will also be equal to color. Now that we have our input and output structs ready for our vertex function, we can go ahead and create it. Since this is our output, our return value for our vertex function will be the same as that. So vert out, vert, which is our function, and the input for it will be our vert input. So a vert input, and we'll call this one i. We'll create a vert out variable called o, and this will be returned all the way at the end. Our o dot position now is going to be equal to multiply unity underscore matrix underscore MVP by our I dot position. So what this is saying is that our, uh, our screen position is going to be equal to, and this is multiplying our vertex's original position, which is the local position of the vertex, by the model view projection matrix to transform that position into screen space. Next up will be our color. And for our color, let's say that we want our x values to be the same as our uh, red values. Our z values will be the same as our blues. And y is going to be the same as our greens for the color of the vertex. So we'll say o.color is going to be equal to um, position, so that will be i dot position dot x, y, and z. Oh, this one should be vert out. Um, actually, Let's, let's call it output since it's more descriptive. So we'll, we'll change everything to be the same. So vert output, we'll call, make this one vert output and this one is vert output as well. Just so that uh, it's more descriptive. Okay, now that we have everything set up now, uh, we can create our fragment function. And our fragment function always returns a half four or usually returns half four, it can be fixed for or so on, but for the most part, it's a, um, a vector of four values and it will be called frag. Of course, its input will be whatever we output from the vertex. So that will be vert output and we'll call this one i. And the semantic for this one will be color. Finally, we, all we need to do in here is to just return whatever we get as the color. So we will return a half four of o.color. 
and this is a half four because it also takes in uh, alpha. So for our alpha, we'll just give it a 1.0. Okay, so now that we have everything set up, we can go back and see what's going on. So this is o.color, where in fact it should be i.color. So there's that. And there we go. As you can see, it is color depending on the vertex's position. But you'll notice that we used i.position, which is the local position of the vertex. So since we use the local position, no matter where the cube moves, it's just going to be using the local position of each vertex, so the colors are always going to stay the same. Even if the object is rotated, it will be the same idea. Everything will stay the same. So how do we change that into world position? And to do this, we need to create a value called, let's say, float, um, float 3. And we'll call this one w position, which is going to be equal to multiply underscore world, uh, no, underscore object to world. And we'll multiply that by i dot position. And we just want the dot x, y, and z of that. And what this will give us is the position of the vertex in world space instead of local space. So if we want to use that now, we can use w position instead of our i dot position. Now if we try to move it around, as you can see, the colors are changing. But you'll notice that it's getting red and it's staying red, very red after that, and then it'll do the same for the blue and green. So how do we loop the values around? What we can do is we can take whatever w dot position is and subtract it from the floor of w dot position our w position. And what this is basically doing is saying that if w position is 0.4 uh, the floor of that is 0, so 0 minus, or 0 0.4 minus 0 is still 0 0.4, and then once it goes all the way up to 1, it will flip back down. So you'll notice that it is flipping between uh, red and not red. And it should do the same for, it should do the same for the z value and the, the y value as well. Okay, so now that this is working for the time being, um, how do we make it loop a bit smoother? And to do that, let's say instead of it snapping all the way back, maybe we just want the distance from where it is on the x so that it goes all the way up to 0 0.5 and it goes down to 0 and then up to 0 0.5 and down to 0. And to do this, we just want the absolute distance between these two values. So this is going to be these two values. And the absolute distance from there to, well, absolute value from there to 0 0.5. And you'll notice that it's, it gets redder and then, and then less red and so on. So it's almost pulsing. And we are almost there. Finally, we multiply that value by two. And what this will do is give us just, a, just brighter colors. And as you can see, the color is changing depending on where the vertex is. There we go. So if it's up here, and we'll move it around. The color of our cube is changing depending on where we are. So all this now is vertex-based. So we're, we're just choosing where our vertex is and changing the color accordingly. What if we want to base it on where the, uh, the final pixel is instead? What we can do is pass it in through the vertex output. So we'll say something like float3 w position is going to be of semantic position one. And instead of just declaring a variable in here, we'll say that o dot w position is equal to that. 
So this is going to be now, since we're doing the coloring in the fragment shader, we don't need to pass the color anymore. So all we're going to do is just pass the position and the world position, and we'll deal with the coloring inside the fragment shader. So we will take that, and in here now, for all of this, we can just take all of that that we did for the coloring before, and say that this is our new color over here, which is I dot and also I dot. There we go. And now we can remove our color. So we're setting our new color to that. So if we go back, and as you can see, now it's not just basing its color on where the verts are and interpolating between them, it's where that pixel is in the world. And it's basing the color of the cube on it, which looks pretty cool actually. Um, so this is a quick rundown of what you can do with fragment and vertex shaders. Uh, I will try to make a few more videos uh, going more in depth on what you can do with these things. But uh, as you can see, you can do stuff like this where it's very simple, um, very simple effects that you can use to uh, on objects that are unlit. And so instead of just using a surface shader and editing it, you can create your own quick shader that can do it with much better performance. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope this video helped you out. If you have any comments, feedback, or suggestions, please leave them below, and I will see you in the next video.